So first I'm gonna get out all of my supplies. I've got some sensitive medical grade tape here and it's a paper tape. I put that down so that I can put my drop of glue on it. And I put down two pieces because I'm going to change my glue drop every 30 to 40 minutes or so, just whenever it starts to dry out. So I'm gonna use my isolation tweezer to grab out my 0.03s. So these are Lash Anarchist 0.03s. This is just a mixed tray and I'm gonna put um, basically like eight through 12 out for him. In just a minute though, I'm gonna realize that I, I actually need some fives, six and sevens. So I'll be moving these down. I also have over there on the left, I have some iPads that I plan on using. They're a new style, so we'll see if I like them. If I get them on and I decide I don't like them, I'll just change them out. I also have my mirror because I'm gonna be putting peaks on him because I'm doing a strip lash look and I need to keep checking those peaks constantly. So with my glue, I have the Lash Bomb Bomb Diggity Black Glue. It's a one second drying glue and it's one of my favorites and it's one of our best sellers. People love this glue for a reason. It holds. So this is the part where I realized like, oh, I need sevens, sixes, and fives. And yes, you heard me right. I know those millimeters are super small, but I need them for his inner corners because sometimes you just gotta go really small. He has a really small eyelid space and a really small eye as you can see. So these are the iPads that I thought I was gonna use. A lot of the time I like using three millimeter foam tape, medical grade, but these looked similar. So I'm just trying them. Right now I think I'm saying they're kind of stiff, like a lot stiffer than I expected. So we'll see how this goes. I always have my client look up so that I can get right up to their eye, but like not touching their waterline. I wanna cover up their bottom lashes but you don't want anything to be sitting on their waterline because it's really irritating. So I'm trying these, realizing I don't have enough space for my map, so I put another one under it. And I'm asking him how it is, if it's comfortable, and he's really sensitive, and I, he's telling me it's not comfortable. He can feel it on his eyes, and I was just like, fuck these. <laughs> We're not using these. Back to the basics. I'm gonna be using that medical grade paper tape right up to his waterline, but not touching. And then once you get this on, I'm doing it in two pieces just so that I, a straight piece won't work. But um, once you get it on, I always have my client close their eyes and then I kind of like readjust because their eye shape is different when it's open versus when it's shut. So you always need to like lift up that the outer corner while holding on to the inner corner and adjust it. And I'm just throwing on like a regular ass old iPad because I need space to put my map. I like to map out where I'm going to put those peaks first. So my really pointy, like highest point of my set. And you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. Right now I'm just taping up his eyelid and I'm adjusting a little bit. So if you use tape, you're gonna wanna put an iPad over that tape because it gives you a really big, nice surface area to map. And I don't map every single time, but I do map the first time I see any client and I'll just snap a picture so I can look at it next time. So I'm just mapping out my peaks. And like I said, in my other video, he has a really small lid space. So I'm only putting like six, I might add one more peak in there once I get started, but I'm going pretty short. 12 is gonna be my longest peak. And then I'm just going down in size from there. This is like a basic doll shape. So 9, 10, 11, two 12s in the middle and another 11 on the end. 
And then I'm going down three millimeters in between. This is really important to go at least two to three millimeters down or else you won't see a difference and those peaks won't stand out. So now I'm making the peaks, that's first. And I'm going to grab a chunk of lashes and slightly dip them into the glue. And then I turn them towards me and pinch the tips together. I don't put glue on the tips, just so you know. I'm using my Plastics Collection tweezers, the Boo Horse Slim Boot tweezer for my volume tweezer, and the Curved Isolation So Fetch. And I love these tweezers because they just have such a good grip. So I put in all the peaks first. I'm removing this one because it ended up fanning out a little bit more than I like, and that's a really good way to lose your peaks. So what I'll do if that happens, if it's too fanned out, it's not pointy enough, is I will take it off and I'll put a new one on there. After I have the peaks exactly how I want, that's when I will start hand making fans. And I'm using my .03s here. That's my little smiley face mirror. I like to check to make sure I'm not losing my peaks. Like I said, a lot of the time when people are doing texture or a strip lash wispy look, they'll say, I did it exactly how you said, but then when they opened their eyes, I couldn't see the pointy peaks anymore. So they lost their peaks. And one of the main reasons is because when you put on the peak, when you apply it to a lash, sometimes it'll fan out a little bit at the tips and then it'll just blend into the rest of the lashes. So you have to keep checking with your mirror to make sure that those are not fanning out and they're not gonna end up blending in with the rest of the lashes. So when I'm doing this, I am hand making a fan on the side and then I'm going in. I kind of already know where I'm gonna go with my tweezer. I kind of like to isolate as I go and don't isolate like I do unless you're wearing like some heavy ass duty magnification glasses. They're super important to be able to see every little lash and to make sure you're isolating properly. You're gonna put these lashes, that one almost looked like I put it on the skin but I swear to you I didn't you're gonna put it right up next to the skin, but not touching the skin. But it's gonna look really close. And I like to apply all my fans right to the side of the lash, not on top, not on bottom, but I like to apply it on the side. That way I get a really good angle and a really good connection so that I have better retention which I'm sure my husband wished that I had really bad retention on this set because we couldn't get his eyelashes off for like three days. <laughs> so right now I'm just going over the top layer. I'm just going for the easiest lashes and I'm putting the right lengths depending on where I'm at on my map. And I'm gonna fill up that whole top layer first. Next, I'm gonna lift and I'm gonna do the bottom layer. We kind of skipped ahead here because this would be a long ass video if we didn't. But I'm making sure I didn't lose any of my peaks. I'm always looking with that mirror. I decided it needed another peak right here. So I did another unfan and added that in later. You can always add them in as you go. Like you don't have to like just go off of your map. You need to be looking with your mirror to make sure your shape is working. And at this point, I did lift and I finished out the bottom layer and I'm going throughout and everything left is a middle layer because I have the top layer done and the bottom layer done. So I know that this is a middle layer here and this is all just for fullness. But I'll show you in just a moment how I lift and get those bottom layers. Yeah. So you lift and then you kind of push down and from my view, it makes it look like all of the lashes have kind of separated. My hands are wobbly because I don't like doing lashes under pressure. And somebody's filming me, so. 
And again, make sure you're wearing those mag glasses. I can see the lashes and I'm isolating well, but if you're a beginner, you're gonna need to isolate super, super well before you can start pulling these tricks out of your old bag. Thank you. 